What's up, fellow RC addicts, enthusiasts, and just anybody with a general interest in the RC hobby? Bear down here with you. So today I've got my son's SMT body. So we haven't done any kind of enforcement to it yet. Uh, he's just been kind of putzing around with it at the stock brush setup. Since we're going to be putting the uh, Castle Creations 3S setup that I had in my Rustler, pretty sure that this body is going to get abused a little bit more than before. So I'm going to go ahead and do the uh, shoe goo with the mesh tape reinforcement. We'll go over some of the details, but if you want more information, a little more detailed look, go ahead and click on the link in the corner and it should take you to another video of mine. That gives you a little bit more information and goes into a little more detail. But anyway, start off obviously going to need the shoe goo, a nice high quality fiberglass tape. This one is actually a low profile. It's very important that it's a good quality tape and that it adheres well because you're gonna have issues later on if you don't. You want a nice sharp pair of scissors, good sharp hobby knife, and then lastly, a hot glue gun. Uh, using that a little bit, you'll see why. I'm gonna go ahead and just get started with putting the tape on. All right, I also forgot to add that uh, you are going to need a well-ventilated area once you start applying the shoe goo, and then you're going to need a pair of some nitrile gloves to cover your hands with. Now, I don't know if I added in the last video, but when I do wash this body, I use a uh, Scotch-Brite pad, so it does scuff the body slightly. You do want to kind of get that shininess off of the body for the most part. Help with the tape to stick and also help the glue, the glue to stick as well, or the goo, not the glue. But we'll go ahead and get started applying the tape now. So as you can see, the windows here, I've got a little bit of room to play with. So normally if I had a precise cut to go around this window, I'd probably use a higher end frog tape, but I'm just going to use a normal blue painter's tape to cover this since we kind of have that extra room to play with there. Covering up any area that you do not want to get any of the shoe goo on. So if you're having trouble seeing through, if you're trying to tape something like that, another little hit you can do is just kind of putting a light behind it. And then you can see that makes it a lot easier to see where that line's at. So like I've said before, you don't need to try to get everything done in one giant strip. The main thing is just kind of trying to take your time, little pieces if you have to, uh, making sure everything's sticking nice and good. We'll show you how the, the hot glue helps with that here in a, in a minute. And um, you want to try not to overlap. You want to basically butt up your pieces next to each other. If you can't get them to butt up and they do overlap a little bit, it's not the end of the world. It's just not going to look as pretty, but I mean, who's going to see it besides you, right? It's definitely isn't something if you're in a hurry to go do. I mean, sure you could do it in a hurry, but if you really want it to look nice, you're gonna it's going to take you a little while. So the places you really, if you're using a good, nice quality tape, you don't just go out and get the cheapest stuff. You're really only going to need to use the uh, hot glue in these little tight little crevices and nooks and crannies like this. So all you really need to do is just go ahead and quickly, you don't need too much, you don't want to get it all globbed up because we want to be able to have the shoe goo be able to do its job. So you don't want to use, leave big globs there, but let's go ahead, let that dry real quick and that'll hold it there until we're ready to apply that shoe goo. And then it actually, because once the shoe goo gets on there, it's a pretty thick substance. So you actually get the shoe goo wanting to start pulling the tape if it doesn't have a good adhesion to the body itself. So it can be kind of a pain in the butt. But in the long run, if you don't want to keep on buying bodies, I definitely say this is the, the best method of trying to save your bodies. And then this is just one of my MIP uh, drivers. It just comes with this nice rubber tip. I find it pretty darn helpful in trying to push the tape into the corners and getting it into the nooks and crannies without having to use my fingernails or anything like that. Anything soft with a rounded tip that's not going to push through I think would work ideally for you. Notice I left this gap. I'm just going to go back in a little bit later and just kind of cut that in because I don't want to keep on following this funky pattern at the back. I like to straighten it out and making it as easy on myself as possible. One thing I would recommend doing is if you're not going to be using the tape for a little bit, just kind of fold it back a little bit on itself because I've done drywall for I don't know how many years and I still to this day lose the seam if I uh, don't push the corner down on itself. So just a little helpful tip. Not really RC related, but if you're doing this, it's going to help you out. I may be making this a little bit harder looking than it is too. But uh, trying to shoot it and making sure that trying to keep it in the view of the camera for you guys isn't always the easiest, but I think it's worth it as long as I can help a couple people out. And you want to make sure when you're pushing and cutting the knife that you're not pushing too hard and actually cutting through the body. You just want to be scoring that tape and kind of just pulling it through from there. All right, so now we're back to just having to follow a single line. 
instead of having a bunch of little goofy ones to follow. See, I've done this, uh, I don't even know how many times now, and trying to do one big piece is still a pain in the butt. So like I said, if you wanna, there's no shame in doing one little piece at a time. Go ahead and try to line it up on the other side so we're not overlapping or overlapping as little as possible. My dummy self came up short there. See, that's what happens when you get cocky. So before we get too far, I'm gonna go ahead and trim some of this extra stuff. I just find it easier to not have the extra tape hanging around. I was always a firm believer in having a clean job site. So I just like having a clean work area and a clean work environment and just more productive. And uh, it can definitely be a lot less frustrating. All right, as you can see, it was it's just easier to do that one piece at a time. If you wanted to, you can do it both ways. I prefer to do it the other way. So leave a comment and let me know if you think it holds better if you use a longer but fewer Fewer pieces makes it more of a solid structure than obviously you're just gonna be cutting around if you've got windows this one's got cut out windows so you can go ahead and see the driver in this guy so I think I'm gonna have a little bit of overlap here I might actually trim it because it's kind of a lot because I'm just trying to straighten out the lines you know what? that might actually be too much overlap for me guys I'm not gonna lie so I'll probably end up cutting that strip right there but first we're gonna go ahead and now you obviously you guys don't have to be the this picky about it that's just me so I just want to not have that overhang so I'm just gonna go ahead and here we go now we're back to having straight edge on that side well, straighter edge I should say So with the uh, A pillars I always find it easy to just do those completely separate and not try to make them match anything else. So I'll just set up a different O piece of tape here. We're going to cut that at overhang. Go ahead and just stick this up into the corners as much as possible. Sometimes when you cut off some of these little tiny squares, if you might want to just kind of put them to the side and stick them to something, maybe the edge of the table you're using. It's just nice to have because sometimes you just need a little bit extra and it's frustrating when you already threw it away and you're like, oh man, I just had a piece that would have been the perfect size. So sometimes it's just handy to keep that with you. behind the headlights there not gonna be easy eventually I do want to get the light kit for this so we'll probably be putting holes in there so if behind these uh, sticker headlights aren't perfect for now that's all right Sorry if I'm getting out of shot here guys, I'm not really familiar with the uh, little tips and tricks I do in this body, so I'm having some issues trying to figure out the best way to do this, so when it comes to like the Max and the Rustler and the X-Max and all that stuff, I'm uh, pretty familiar with the shapes of those bodies, so I don't... I'm pretty good at uh, knowing the nice little tips and tricks of getting that done. It's, uh, like I've said before, the, the Max or the Rustler 4x4 the uh, the Max and the X Max and I believe the Haas is yeah the Haas as well all have uh, roughly the same size not size sorry the same shape body so if you get down being able to do one of those pretty uh, efficiently then you pretty much have the whole Traxxas Basher lineup even the uh, the E Revo six has a very similar looking body too so once you get one of those down it's pretty pretty easy but I don't know here I am talking about that and I'm uh, doing an SMT 10 so.
So I don't. You can see these edges right here. I like to leave a little bit of overhang because when you go to start to put the shoe goo on, when you go to wipe it down, it will. The shoe goo will hold that down, and I like just kind of having that little bit of rollover. I don't know if you notice, I did that pretty much on everything. So you got a little bit of rollover there, just on the interior pieces. Obviously, you don't want to have the rollover going to the exterior of the body because that would just obviously ruin uh, the look of the body. We're gonna go ahead. So we already have the inside of this window taped off, but. But we're just going to go ahead, take a little piece, a little square. We're going to cover each one of the holes for the uh, body mount to go through. Kind of squeeze it in there. Make sure we just don't want to have any of the shoe goo itself squeezing out of that hole and coming out into the body. So again, obviously, we're going to try to avoid pushing anything onto here. But this is just a better safe than sorry type of scenario. All right, now instead of just covering the holes too, I also like to go ahead, take a piece of tape. And I like to go around kind of just put it anywhere that you're going to have any kind of a, a surface that meets up outside of the body is going to be meeting up with the uh, where we're installing the shoe goo. If you were really doing some kind of like extreme hardcore bashing and didn't care what your body looked like, like if you were one of those people that just get one of the uh, indestructible bodies and don't paint it or anything, I imagine you could actually probably put like one or two coats of this on the inside of a unpainted body and then put like another layer or two of this on the outside of a unpainted body and I think you'd have yourself a pretty darn indestructible body yourself without having to spend the money and then wait for all that whatever three to four months of shipping to get the indestructible body. Alright, so that's uh, good to go. Ready to go ahead and apply the shoe glue. I'll uh, see you guys outside. Uh, what's up everybody we are back uh, I'm outside now like I said earlier if you're gonna be putting the shoe goo on I highly recommend that you have a very well ventilated area because stuff is no joke so we'll go ahead and get started putting the gloves on oh man it is muggy outside these that's not easy to put on right now. Everyone's got their own way of doing things, as I always say, so I'm not saying my way is perfect or the best way to do it. I like to start from one side, work to another, the other side. kind of want to slowly do it. You don't want to dump the whole tube on because this stuff gets very tacky. As I said before, if any of you guys are familiar with working with caulk or uh, paint or drywall mud, anything like that, if you start playing with it too much and it starts setting up on you, it's just going to make things more difficult. So... Sometimes you just kind of got to let things be. I'm just going to go ahead and put a little bit up on this front corner. And you don't want it to be super goopy thick. You just want to make sure you got a nice even coat on it. So you just I have the tape all the way, the painter's tape all the way around to just kind of help keep any of the excess goo from going over and being on the outside of the body because this stuff is pretty strong. There's a reason we're using it to reinforce our bodies, right? Remember I was saying about trimming it over and leaving that little bit of excess? It's kind of really the only place you want to have. The uh, overlap is on these edges here. You don't want to have much, but once you get that shoe goo going and you just kind of wrap it down like that, it's going to hold it nice in place for you. So I don't want to say take your time with this stuff because you do, once you have it set down, down, you do have a limited time to work on it so it's almost like uh, once it gets to that point you don't want to keep on playing with it you almost want to just let it dry and then come back and uh, maybe put another coat on it or trim off whatever excess because once it starts getting to that really tackiness you're just going to start pulling up all of your tape and ripping gloves not easy another thing you can use too is if you get like a cheap uh, one of those cheap little like 25 cent brushes for uh, when you're doing soldering or fluxing or anything like that you can get into these little tight spaces if you can't reach a finger in there. It's almost better to put on a thin layer and then going back with a second thin layer to making making sure you have everything covered up. Like I said in the last video, it's almost like painting. You know, usually if you're switching colors on something or trying to painting a fresh wall, you're not going to have it done in one coat. You're going to have to go back to make sure you get everything. So I'd say it's almost like the same with this. Multiple thin coats are better than one big old thick goopy coat. You can see it right there. It's start, I don't know if you could see it in the camera. It's starting to pull and then it's starting to actually move the tape around a little bit. That's starting 
gonna get too tacky right there I'm just gonna leave that be see here's one of those spots where I was talking about this tapes pulling up a little bit with my fingers being sticky too it's not gonna once I try to push that down with my fingers it's gonna pull right back up with my sticky glove so if you just use a little dowel kind of push it back in place it's not gonna pull up as easily on you so luckily we're done with that area up here mostly so we don't really have to worry about touching that anymore for now said we may go back and do another second lighter coat sometimes I wonder uh, what my garbage men are thinking when they see all these tubes of uh, shoe goo sitting in a recycling I don't know if they're thinking I'm like huffing fumes or something or what's going on but I would have some questions so I am probably gonna go a little bit thicker than I normally would go with the shoe goo on this uh, I'm probably gonna go back and do a second coat regardless because this body is actually kind of hard to find and then uh, my eight-year-old son will be driving it and he's going from only driving a brush car moving it to brushless so uh, I'd like to give this as much fortification as possible make sure you're getting in all those little nooks and crannies so I'm gonna go ahead and do the flat spot on the bottom here and work my way up so that way I'm not having to worry about brushing up against the uh, shoe goo on the side there so if you're starting off I've done I don't even know how many bodies I've shoe gooed now but don't <laughs> feel like you have to be putting big old globs like that down. I mean, you can just little tiny globs, work it in. I do have to say though, this body is uh, actually one of the easier bodies I've shoe glued. And so if I don't have perfect coverage this time around, I'm not too concerned. I planned on going back and giving it a second light coat. Now this edge right here, since there's so much space opened up there, I want to make sure that I'm, this is good and shoe glued here. And then in this corner here as well, because it's not much structural rigidity there holding anything on so once it starts doing wheelies and going up on that back end it's gonna kind of want to go ahead and just rip that body I'm actually you see all this build up on my gloves I'm actually going to take that off because it's starting to stick to the other stuff I'm not making life much easier for myself I'll just say that much so we're gonna go right back ahead where we had left off before so that is coat one on we're gonna go ahead and let that dry come back and uh, we'll go ahead and apply a second coat see you soon all right, and we are back. It's been about four hours. I wouldn't recommend going out and bashing after that amount of time, but the uh, directions on the bottle do say that if you're gonna be building up more than one coat, you only need to wait about three or four hours. So the nice thing about when you're doing more than one coat is if you have like a little seam like this right here where it's overhanging, you can actually just kind of push that down. And now because of the way that the uh, shoe goo is, it's actually gonna stay down like that. Any of these little edges pop up around here, you can just go ahead and push that right down before you go apply your next coat. So now the first, when you put on that first coat, you're gonna wanna be a little more cautious putting it on. You're gonna obviously not, you're gonna be making sure that you're not moving the tape around. When we're putting the second coat on, we can go ahead and move a little bit faster. You know, the tape's held in place. Use the analogy earlier of, of painting. It's the same thing. When you're painting, the second coat always goes much faster than your first coat. Also with this too, going through the second coat, it should go a lot farther. Like I don't know if you guys go back and check the first. I had to put a couple of globs in to make sure I was getting all that coated. And now you can see, I don't know if you can see, but I can feel all that's already coated. I honestly can't say I've tried using this, uh, going out and bashing a body or actually running it without at least two days of dry time. Usually when I do the shoe goo to a body, I end up letting it sit for several days. So I can't tell you that it's, it says on here if you're gonna be using it, obviously we're not using it for the same purposes that they're talking, that you should let it cure for at least 24 to 48 hours. But I'm never in a rush to use it. Like actually, uh, we're gonna be putting that uh, motor, like I said, brushless motor in my son's truck. So this is actually being done before that, so I'm going to have the time to order the parts I need and everything to get my son's truck up and the SMT up and ready to go brushless. The body's going to have plenty of time to cure. I'm just trying to make sure I'm really pushing it in and uh, trying to leave as little material left as possible, but I'm just trying to make sure it's shoved in all the little holes in the mesh there. All right, let that dry. Go ahead, pull tape, and uh, see how it turned out. We are back. It's been about uh, two days since we last put the uh, final coat on. It's uh, nice and dry now. So, like I had said before, while this was drying, I was gonna go ahead and put that brushless setup in my uh, son's SMT-10. So you can see in there, we've got the uh, 3800 kV motor with the uh, Sidewinder short course truck ESC. Got that on, got the body all trimmed, paint everything, good to go. I remember, like I said before, <clears throat> the last video, it doesn't need to be perfect, guys. It's just you're going to be the only one seeing it unless it, uh, you happen to be in my circumstance. And then 
you'll be lucky if maybe a couple dozen people see it. <laughs> so it's more about just trying to save yourself some money and having to buy new bodies over and over again. So if this video helped you out at all or you just enjoyed it, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And uh, if you want to see this bad boy running on that brushless power, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Uh, if you don't do either, at least go out and enjoy some RC, folks. Bear down out.